One thing that Liz Truss won't be mentioning anytime soon, or indeed Priti Patel, is the fact that eight of the Russian oligarchs sanctioned by the UK due to, their, due to their links with President Putin came to Britain under the golden scheme for wealthy investors. Um, that has been squeezed out of the Home Office. Um, opened, it has to be said, in 2008 by the Labour government, but of the... Uh, <laughs> Of all of the oligarchs sanctioned by the UK, eight had been able to buy their visas by dint of being wealthy, which leads us neatly to um, a chap called Bill Wiggin, a Conservative MP who was in the uh, Select Committee yesterday, wondering why it wasn't easier for... Well, you have a listen to what he had to say. We have on at least three occasions promised the Qataris visa-free access. These are very wealthy people who are unlikely to stay, and yet... Despite saying we do it three times, we still haven't delivered. And I'm really worried, Prime Minister, that everything you've said to us today, I actually want to happen, but it isn't happening. And the only people who are turning up turn up in rubber boats. Why can't we get the right people through our immigration system instead of the wrong ones? Well, um, so you, and you, and if I understand you correctly, Bill, what you're saying is why are we being so... Why can't the, the, can, can't the, the categories and other Gulf countries have visa-free access. Well, we want Ukrainians, we want Qataris, okay, we don't you. want people in rubber boats. So, I think he needs a nickname, Bill Wiggin. I'm going to go with Bungalow. Bungalow Bill Wiggin, because there's nothing upstairs. Not only completely failing to understand the difference between normal immigration and asylum-seeking or the refugee route, but also, as the government continues to unpick its incredibly close relationships with dodgy Russian oligarchs, he's suggesting that we should let in extremely wealthy people from Qatar um, more easily than we currently do. Uh, Qatar, of course, uh, actually has Sharia law. I, I remember when all the racists were marching around sticking, uh, sticking labels on lampposts claiming that this was a Sharia law area. Uh, both lots of racists. Uh, were, were every, every, every brand of racist was doing it. The, the kind of racists that wanted Sharia law and the kind of racists that were pretending that there was Sharia law. They were all at it. Um, and there is bungalow Bill Wiggin claiming that we should make it easier for people from a country with... As long as they're very, very wealthy. I, said, I mean, it, 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 it is actually breathtaking that these people are in the House of Commons. But then again, I was reflecting this morning that Grant Shapps has been questioning the probity of the chief executive of P&O Ferries, and people seem to forget that Grant Shapps um, used to sell get-rich-quick schemes on the internet under an assumed name. Do you know, in a normal country, a producer of a programme where a presenter has just said that would have a fit of the vapours and think, oh my God, we've probably just libelled him. There's no way a cabinet minister could have had a previous career selling get-rich-quick schemes on the internet under an assumed name. And in fact, to be fair to Grant Shapps, he had two assumed names. I'm such an anorak, I can remember both of them. You're probably going to text me and say, actually, there were three, because you're an even bigger anorak than I am. But Michael Green and Sebastian Fox. And he's now saying, I'm not sure that the chief executive of P&O Ferries is a fit and proper person to, uh, to be running a business.